Alrighty, welcome back guys to the DYS F4 video series. Look in the description below where you'll find a link to the playlist. Now it's time to wire in our cameras and video transmitters, power them, and then I'm going to take in a beta flight and show you how to set up the OSD. I'm holding this flight controller in the same orientation that DYS has made their wiring diagram. So we're looking at these pins on the left. The top two pins are ground pins. Then the next row of pins are both five volt power sources. Then we have video out, which your uh, video wire going to your video transmitter will be placed on this pin. Video in, which is the video wire coming from your camera. Then we have uh, UART number six, which doesn't really apply to this video. I covered that in a separate video. And then we have uh, another ground pin on the edge and then VTX power which means uh, this pin will be pr producing the full voltage of the battery so whatever voltage your battery is at that is how much is coming out of that pin so the easy part because there's only one way to do this uh, run your video wire from your video transmitter on this pin here and then the video wire from your camera on this pin here now let's talk about how to power both most cameras handle 5 volts to some other voltage and some cameras can only operate off of 5 volts but the point is almost all cameras can be uh, powered off of these two 5 volt power pins so I'll be placing my ground wire on this round pin and the 5 volt or the power wire on the 5 volt pin for the video transmitter not many video transmitters can be powered off of 5 volts most of them are uh, 7 volts and higher. For this reason, the majority of us will be using the VTX power pin to power the video transmitter. Just make sure whatever cell battery you are using, that voltage does not surpass uh, the limits of the video transmitter. For example, uh, I use 4 cell batteries, which fully charge is 16.8 volts, so my video transmitter has to handle over 16.8 volts, which it does. It handles... I don't even know. Uh, it's like 20 something volts. Now what if you want to use a LC filter, something like this, to filter the power supply going to your video transmitter and camera to clean up your video. You can use something like this, just place it somewhere on your multi-rotor. Uh, so for example I could mount mine there and then power this off of the VTX pin and this ground pin and then on the other side I could place my camera and video transmitter power wires off of this and uh, you could do the same assuming your camera can handle the full voltage of the battery if not then power your camera off the 5 volt pin and only power your video transmitter off of the LC filter I will not be using an LC filter uh, like I said many times before I use the Cricut video transmitters uh, these don't exactly filter the power but they do handle the voltage spikes extremely well and uh, give me pretty clean video but what I have done is place a capacitor on this. A capacitor is not a LC filter. It's technically half. Uh, the C in LC stands for capacitor, but the L stands for inductor. Without that inductor, we don't have a LC filter. Now speaking of this video transmitter, uh, a lot of you guys are using video transmitters uh, that are similar to this. And what I mean by that is they use these five pin connectors and uh, you power this with a full voltage of the battery and then it has a 5 volt regulator built in so it's going to kick 5 volts back out through a separate power wire and a separate ground wire and then you use this to power your camera so if you do have a VTX like that then you will only be powering the VTX off the flight controller and then the camera will be powered off the video transmitter this is actually how I will be running mine uh, except in this video I will be powering both camera and VTX off the flight controller because Many of you guys have asked what does the video look like uh, on the DYS F4 and the Betaflight F3 flight controllers. So uh, I'm going to do a separate video showing you what it looks like and then after I'm done with that video then I'll go back to powering the camera off the video transmitter. So let me go ahead and wire this up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay here's what it looks like. Very simple and very clean. Camera ground up top, then the uh, 5 volt power going to the camera then this wire here is the video wire from the camera the yellow wire next to that one is the video wire going to my video transmitter and then like I said I'm powering the VTX with the full voltage of the battery and then the ground wire for the VTX so now let me get the VTX plugged up then we'll go to Betaflight and get everything set up and I'm back 
Uh, one thing I've done in between the last clip and now is add in a receiver to the flag controller. That way I can show you how to enter the OSD menu to change your PIDs, rates, expos, and much more. So now let's go into beta flight, connect, go to configuration, scroll down, and make sure you have OSD turned on. Then save and reboot. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention, if you do want your call sign or name, nickname, whatever, showing up on your on-screen display, then go ahead and type it in here. Now go to the OSD tab. First things first, pick and choose what you want showing up on your on-screen display. And you can remove this logo to, uh, it just helps you see a little bit better. Okay, now I've chosen what I want on my on-screen display. Now grab it and move it to where you want it. But before you get everything settled down, uh, the video format, if you leave this at auto, it will automatically detect what uh, type of format your camera is using. But when you have this set to auto, uh, your screen is the same size as the PAL format. So if we click PAL, it doesn't change. But if you are using an NTSC camera, you'll see that the screen size changes. So if you already know you have an NTSC camera, then go ahead and just select it because, for example, if we have the set to auto and I place my throttle position and voltage down here, and then when we actually go to use the on-screen display on the multi-rotor, we're not gonna see it. It's gonna get cut off. And I am using an NTSC camera, so let me go ahead and select that. Now I can drag this to where I want it. Also, if you put this in the very edge, it's probably gonna get cut off. That's why I bring it in just one space like that. And then I like my uh, call sign here. Once again, I'm gonna bring it in one space so it doesn't get cut off. And then I like my voltage in the middle. Once you've done that, then click save and you're all done. Okay, and here it is, all said and done. So let's give it a try. Okay, we got video. I've got a lens cap over it just so we can see a little bit better. So we see my uh, call sign at the top left, throttle position at the bottom left, and voltage at the bottom middle. The last thing I have to show you guys is if you move your yaw to the left and pitch up, that's gonna enter the OSD menu. So let me go ahead and turn this on, we'll give it a try. All right, so yaw left, pitch up, and there we go. Now you can use both sticks to navigate through the menu. Um, here you can change your PIDs, rates, as well as you know your uh, TPA, TPA breakpoint, your filters, and pretty much everything you can do through Betaflight. You can set your alarms, check your uh, version of firmware, and much more. So just go ahead, play around with it, figure out what all you can do. Uh, it's an amazing feature. That does it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.